Let's watch online. Let's get your hymn books. Turn to page 601, please. Page 601. Everyone stand together as we sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Page number 601. Everyone standing. We thank you for your grace. Pray that you'll help all of us tonight. Be with all of the folks over in the gym. Be with all the children. Give them safety, Lord. I pray you'll give all the teachers and workers wisdom. Lord, I pray you'll help us as we're over here. We look in thy word. But also, Lord, as we come to you in prayer, I pray you'll help us to trust you and pray in faith believing, knowing that you can do abundantly above all that we ask or think. We again ask you to do what only you can do tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Good to see all of you here tonight. If you're watching online, we're so very thankful that you are. We love each one of you, and you've become just like family. And uh, we know that uh, for sure Brother Jim Rain and his wife are watching all the way in California, and I mention him because we want to have a special prayer for him tonight. Uh, he has been able to come home from the hospital, but uh, his foot is still infected, and so I want you to pray for him in a special way. I tell you what, let's go ahead and go to our prayer sheet. If you need a prayer sheet, if you'll raise your hand, I'm sure somebody's back there in the back. We'll make sure you get one. Does anybody need a prayer sheet tonight? You already got one. That's great. And uh, glad everyone has one. So let's just make a few notes here tonight. I have several things that we want to make note of. Uh, first of all, I want you to remember the marriage conference. It starts tomorrow. So all of you that are here that have signed up, don't forget 6.30 is when it starts. And so... Uh, you want to be on your way, enjoy the get up there early if you can, and enjoy your time. But the services start at 6.30. And uh, I've asked three of the couples that have been a part of it from really the first part of it. Uh, Brother Dallas and Cindy will be speaking. Brother Kevin and Missy Altizer, and then Derek and Missy. Um, Brother Derek and Missy will be speaking tomorrow night. Brother uh, Dallas and Cindy will be speaking on Friday evening, the first session, and then the last closing is Kevin and Missy Altizer. And I'm, it's going to be great. So uh, we're looking forward to it. All of you that aren't able to come, if you would, pray about it. Pray for all the safety. There will be about 156, a little, you know, somewhere in there, folks driving there just for that event. This is the largest group we've ever had. And so uh, just pray that it will all go well. Uh, also, let me remind you, I want to give you a praise. Um, Brother Little Stone I had this procedure done. And uh, everything went great. And I'll tell you, that doctor was very thorough, very sweet man. Spent a lot of time with the family and went over everything. And he told them that everything looked great up there. And uh, didn't he say, Brother Scotty, a million of a million chance it would ever happen again. Think of that. And so, uh, of course, I even spoke up. I don't normally talk. I'm not family. I was trying to keep my mouth quiet, which is hard for me to do. But 
I did look at the doctor and I said, he's a miracle, isn't he? And he said, absolutely, no doubt about it. And so uh, we're thankful for the praise. So continue to pray for Mr. Stone. All right. Also another praise, little Chloe got to come home. The little baby we've been praying for for a long time got to come home. But we still want to pray for her in a special way. She's in the second row there. And then I did mention Jim Rain a moment ago. If you'll circle his name. Brother Jim, once you know, we're going to pray that that foot heals. It needs to heal. So church, I'm asking you to really, really pray that this foot will heal. Because if not, there'll have to be something done about it. And we, want, we don't want that done. So let's really pray, ask God to heal this infection. And uh, we're trusting for you, Brother Jim. We're going to pray and lift you up in prayer. I'm glad prayers are like missiles. Uh, even if you're all the way here in Tennessee, you can hit California. Amen. California can hit here, and we can both hit heaven. Can somebody say amen? amen. I appreciate y'all being awake tonight. Y'all are going to be a good crowd to preach to. Because if you say amen and you smile, I'll get you out of here at 8 o'clock. So, Brother Clay, you better yell amen really, really loud. Um, Jim Rain, we want to pray for him. And then, I've circled little baby Chloe there, if you want to circle her. Um, then I want you to write down Gay Rogers. Many of you know uh, Gay. Um, we want to pray for her in a special way. Uh, Miss Carolyn Brackett sent me a message earlier today. But also, Cindy gave me a little bit more detail on that. But we do know this. She's having surgery tomorrow. And so a very, uh, a very serious thing. I want you to pray for her. That will be going on tomorrow. So please keep her in mind. Also, I'd like for you to just be remembered, reminded of little Cade and Cora. They both are sick. And so if you would pray for both of them. And then also, uh, little Raylan and uh, Spencer has been sick as well. So let's pray for the Morrison children. Little Raylan has really been uh, sick. And so let's just pray for them in a special way. Uh, pray for uh, Jeremy and Lindsay. They'll be doing a skit tomorrow. Uh, again, uh, I've asked Brother Sexton and his wife to give a testimony. I've asked the Tolsons to give a testimony on Friday evening. Um, Brother Larry, Miss Judy, y'all will open it up on Thursday night or on Thursday night. And then there's a couple from uh, Virginia that's going to give a testimony. And so uh, I want you to pray about it all that God would just use it and. Uh, People need help, amen? How many of y'all believe people need help? And uh, that's a great resource, and uh, so I want you to pray that God will use it in a special way. I sure would appreciate that. Remember our president, our leaders. Remember the world situation. Uh, we're in dire straits, and uh, let's just really pray that God would work and uh, move in a very, very precious way. All right? Does anybody else have something special tonight? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and I had that. I am so sorry. I should have mentioned that tonight. I had that as well, so please forgive me. But yes, she did let us know. And so let's remember this family in a very, very special way, the Green family. Let's remember. Yes, sir, Brother Palmer. Shannon and Walden, one of our neighbors, uh, sisters. Okay. Shannon Walden. Let's pray for Shannon Walden. Let's pray for Robert. He's got some things coming up. Possible surgery. This sore needs to heal, doesn't it? So let's pray. This sore heals. That's what keeping it. Is that's what keeping from doing it? So let's 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 pray for this this place to heal. All right, because Robert needs this surgery. Yes, sir, Brother Buckley. Julie McCray. Let's remember her in a very special way. Julie McCray. And we're getting this down to put on the on the prayer sheet. Uh, it will be on there next week. Any of these requests? Yes, sir. I do have a prayer for my job situation. Yeah, brother Robert got a job. That's a blessing, isn't it? Praise the Lord. That was a quick hire. You must impress them people there at Food City. Amen. It's a blessing. Or maybe God was in it. Maybe both. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, let's remember Miss Dana. She's just having some, some health things going on there. So let's remember her. I'm going to kind of preach on prayer tonight. So let's really pray tonight. We need it. We 
anybody else? All right. Brother Palmer, would you come and lead us in prayer tonight? Would you do that? And the last Brother Palmer to come up. And I know he and his wife will be coming to the marriage retreat. The sex are coming. Mom and dad, they're coming. I'm going to tell you all right now, they need it. <laughs> Y'all think that's funny? Brother Dawson, y'all know they need it, don't you? Y'all are neighbors. Y'all can hear them all the way down the street. Amen. Y'all know I'm joking, right? They do need it. Y'all need it? I, I know we need it. Everybody needs it, right? And so uh, the morning stars, y'all are newlyweds almost. They're coming. It'd be good. I've done ask them. They've been, they done been told because they're new and they've just been married. They're, they are prime for a game. They will be on a game for sure. Brother Palmer, you come and pray with us, would you? Appreciate you. So uh, nice to come together as a church family and to realize we have a church family to pray and care for one another. And all of you, they're helping and caregiving and all like this. Such a blessing, all the different Amen. ministries. And I just, I'm just encouraged just to look out over you and see what what you're doing and things that are going on for the Lord. It just blesses me, so you're Amen. all a blessing to us. So Amen. let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the time of prayer. That special time when, Lord, we get to talk with you throughout the day, throughout all the time, Father, that your ears always attentive. And, Lord, you want just the very best for each and every one. Lord, you teach us many things in our life and allow us to go and share with others, Lord. So we're so thankful tonight as we remember these precious ones in prayer. Lord, and our pastor, we continue to pray for our pastor, Lord, to continue to bless him and, and his Laura, Father, and give him the strength, give him the, the uh, grace, Lord Jesus, to continue going forward and strengthen the, each and all of us, Lord, as we meet together to worship. So we thank you, Lord, for them and pray, Father, for the different ministries. We think of the Sunday school ministries, the bus ministry, the nursery ministry, the children's church, the Kids for Christ, the Quest for Teens. Father, and as we talk with these young people about salvation, and Lord, they're being taught salvation. Yes. Lord, as you know, and they're growing and they're actually telling others too and encouraging others. So Lord, it's such a blessing to see what you're doing and allowing us all to be a part of it. We thank you, thank you for the prime timers, Lord, and the different ministries that they take part in. Also, other outreach ministries are visiting with others, helping share food to different ones that are in special need. We just pray, Lord, to continue to bless. The bus ministry is such a, a blessing, a bit of a challenge, but Lord, we pray for those young people too, and uh, how helpful they all are to us. And for the, <clears throat> Ladies Fellowship was such a blessing to the ladies to encourage them, uplift them, Lord. The prayer breakfast, Lord, we enjoy so much, Lord, as we come together to pray the special needs of, among our, our lives and others, Father. Um, the podcast, we pray for all of these different ministries for getting the word of God out, which challenges hearts, Lord. And we thank you for the Grace Baptist Church in Rock Springs, for Pastor Cloud, Lord, that you'll continue to minister and bless there. For Miss Doris Brown, there in the assisted home living, Father, that you'll help her. These Christian workers, Lord, it's such a blessing to see each of these. For Corey Hughes, Daniel Edgy, Daniel O'Mary, Deanna Hughes, Debbie Market, Dolores Brandon. Well, Father, they're all such a blessing and encouragement to all. Fernando, Justina, in Panama, we continue to pray that you'll bless and help in that difficult area of the world, too. In, uh, in Kosovo, Father, we've had so much difficulty there politically and the uprising in the country. We pray that you'll help them, Lord, let missionaries and let Christians come in there and to be an encouragement and help to them. For, Lord, our eyes need to be upon you, not upon all these other things. We need to do our part, that's for certain. But, Lord, to be reassured that, Lord, you're in control and we can look to you through difficult times. Alicia Pace, we pray for her, for Hunter and uh, Aiden and Ashton, Father. Uh, please, Lord Jesus, watch over them especially, we pray. For John and Melody Brazel and uh, Micah and 
Eden Edge and Buckley. We pray, Father, for these different ones that are ministering here. And I know so many are doing parts, taking parts in the um, church, the building sites and things. For the marriage retreat, Lord, we look forward to it. It's such a blessing and encouragement to get together, to see some people we haven't seen in nearly a year. Lord, what a blessing it is to and learn, Lord Jesus, more of what you're doing in the marriage, our marriages and in our home. But Kate and Cora, we do continue to pray for them, for the illness and Spencer and Raylan. Raylan, Lord, please, dear Lord Jesus, help them, their mom and dad. For uh, Spencer, I mean for uh, Shannon Walden, Father, it was a prayer was asked for her as we were leaving this afternoon, so I pray that you'll help in the special needs there. And uh, Lord Jesus, uh, also we've got several on our street that need some special prayer. For Julie McRae, this missionary, that the safety for her in the ministry and open up doors, Father, for in the ministry there. We do pray, Lord, for these. For Roger Clemens, Father, he's, we miss him, Lord, not being here. We pray that you'll help him. The Langley's, Father, there's a lot of health difficulties there, so please, Lord, continue to help there. Uh, Betty White, we're so encouraged with Betty and Milford, Lord Jesus, in coming out, though health difficulties, please bless them. And Amy Eldridge, Lord, uh, it just encourages, I know, Brother John, when we just let him know that we continue to pray for Amy, for her health needs. For Janice, uh, uh, James and Janice Daniel, especially Janice in this town, for Dana Hartline, Lord. Uh, Dana's been a help to us in many times. We pray that you'll help her. Father, for these others, for Robert West, for Lord Robert, so we thank you that, Lord, you're watching over and providing him a job. We thank you, Lord Jesus, you're helping him to heal, Father, that he'll be able to have this necessary procedure. So we just pray for Robert that you'll watch over and encourage him and help him. A little stone, Lord, to bless him to each and every one of us. Lord, people ask, well, why do these people go through such difficult times with their health and these young ones, Lord? You know what, Lord, it, it keeps us on our knees. And Lord, we thank you for that. But Lord, don't let us get disheartened. Don't let us get away from you. But help us, Lord Jesus, to realize there are people going through such difficulties. But Lord, you're seeing them through as you see each of us. For Sharpie, do continue to pray for Sharpie, Lord, that you'll just uh, minister to him and Kendra, Lord, in their home and encourage him, help him to improve. Father, for the special needs, for Jim Rain there with a uh, foot infection, Lord, and the necessary help there. Please, Lord, help it to heal. For Lord, Lord you are the great healer, the great physician. We pray for uh, Chloe Pardue, Lord, coming home. We pray, Father, that you'll now help her, Lord, to be strengthened in her life, Lord. And uh, I think of my brother-in-law and sister, Lord, Brian and Heather Frazier. Lord, they're going through some very difficult times. Pray that you'll help them. For Gary Rogers for the surgery coming up tomorrow. We pray that you'll bless and help there. And Lord, we're saddened by the passing of Sabrina Green. And those children, Lord, that need special care and special help. So we pray, Father, that you'll comfort and minister to those needs, Lord. For our country and our, pre our president and the leaders, Lord. Father, though we may not agree with some of the things that they do, Lord, but Lord, we're in encouraged to pray, to bring them before the throne of grace. Lord, for you're the one that turns the hearts of leadership throughout the world. So we pray, Lord, that you'll do mighty and wondrously here in our nation, Lord, that we might continue to say, in God we trust, truly in God we trust. Our troops, Lord, they're on, in harm's way all the time. We think of Matt St. Clair, Bradley Hammonds, Matthew McCoy, Jack, Jacob Snyder, Jake, Jaden Holcomb, Hunter and Dylan Leslie, the Sean Miller, Ryan McFadden, Jack Taylor, Daniel Patrick, Lord, our law enforcement, Father, who come under such stress nowadays, for Jeremy Morrison, Hannah Squires, Brian McLeod, Clark, Kendra Adams, also for the emergency personnel, we thank you for them, for Matt Rorix, James Palmer, uh, Brian Beeler. Lord, there are so many more upon our list, and we thank you, Lord, for them. And Lord, as we come before thy throne of grace daily, Lord, taking these names to before thy throne of grace, we pray, Father, that we might hear wonderful, wondrous reports of what you're doing in these lives. For Lord, we all need that encouragement. We all look to you 
Lord, in this special time when we can commune with you personally as well as together as a church. We thank you now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Barber. Just want to emphasize one thing here as we're looking forward to the weekend, and that is be back in church on Sunday morning, and let's be back for Sunday school at 10 o'clock. This is a special Sunday, and we're looking forward to it. All Sundays are special. The Lord's Day is always a special day, isn't it? And so we need to make it special. So let's make it special Sunday. We're beginning uh, looking at uh, our opening our hands to others and open hand to members, and let's give members that's been out for a little bit, bring them back in uh, and uh, bring, uh, invite them, and then Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we're beginning a new series of lessons. All the classes are new quarter of lessons and adult classes beginning the life of Paul. This is a great set of lessons. Um, Apostle Paul, what a life and uh, what an example to us. And so you want to start right at the beginning of the Sunday morning being here for it. So let's look forward to that and ask the Lord's blessings on our time together here Sunday and the Lord to do a mighty work. So let's remember that. How many of you believe we're a needy people? Amen. We're a needy people. So let's sing page 221 and realize that Christ is all I need. Let's have one stand, please. Christ is all I need. Let's sing. Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. Is everybody doing well tonight? Amen. How many of you glad to be saved? Amen. It's good, isn't it? How many of you glad your sins have been washed away? Amen. Thank God. How many of you have a great day today? Did you have a good day Amen. on Wednesday? Good. And uh, hump day, isn't it? Right in the middle. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the Lord's Day. Amen. Would you open your precious Bible tonight? to the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. Now, it's been a long time since I preached out of the book of Daniel. And a friend of mine and myself, we were talking about veggie tales the other day, of all things, and uh, talking about various stories of veggie tales. Y'all know veggie tales? How many of your children watch veggie tales? Yep. Now, y'all know that my truck... I know I've told you all this, but I, this is my claim to fame. My old Toyota truck was sold to Bob the Tomato's grandson. Did y'all know that? And I spoke to Bob the Tomato on the phone. He called me from Nashville, Tennessee. He said, hey, I'm looking at your truck. We're wanting to buy it for our son. And we got the, he said, I understand you're a pastor. I said, yes. He says, well, I am. And he called his name. It was Bob something. And he said, you would better know me as Bob the Tomato. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, me and my friend, Larry, <laughs> the Tomato, uh, we came up with Veggie Tales. And so I just thought it was kind of neat. I talked to Bob the Tomato. <laughs> Who have y'all talked to on the phone? And anyway, boy, y'all are a rough crowd tonight. Daniel chapter 6, we're going to read the whole chapter. We're going to read the whole chapter, Daniel chapter 6. And I want to bring a little message on just simply this. Lessons from a lion's den. Lessons from a lion's den. Look at verse number 1 of Daniel chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princess might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. 
And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. Now I want you to notice this. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. That's convicting, isn't it? Then said these men, notice how they went then. We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that Whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went to his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon the knees, upon his knees, three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast in the den of lions? The king answered and said, The king is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not the old king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is, that no decree nor statue which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel and the king spake and said to Daniel O Daniel servant of the living God is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions and then said Daniel unto the king O king live forever my God has sent his angel and has shut the lions mouths that they not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee O king have I done no hurt then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, then their children and their wives, and the lions had mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. And then King Darius wrote unto all the people, the nations and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. 
So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. What a story. What a true event. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray you'll help us as we look in thy word for these next few moments. Speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of things to be said here. Think about this true event that took place. I'm going to get a handheld, Brother Chris. I'm going to move just a little bit. And I don't know if they'll be able to hear me online. And I would like for them to be able to hear me as well. I know they'll start telling you there's no sound on there. And there's actually sound. I'm just pulling away from the microphone. There's a lot of things to be said here. There's a lot of things that are convicting to me. Number one, when we think about the plot that these men came up against Daniel with, they couldn't even find anything in his life to get him on. The Bible said he had no heir. Now, we know he wasn't perfect. We know that he wasn't sinless, but it tells us something about the life of Daniel that he had a clear, clean testimony. But the only place that they knew that he was guilty in or something that they felt like they could get him in, and that's a testimony in itself, is they said we can only get him in him loving the Lord and his faithfulness to his God. So they said we're going to get him in something there. So they come up with this great plan, and you understand. Now we know that Daniel prospered. Not only did he prosper, the Bible tells us, through the whole reign of Darius and also the reign of Cyrus, but we know also, if you would go back to chapter 2, uh, and again, this is, this is true history. Nebuchadnezzar was the most powerful man of the then known world. King Darius was the most powerful man of the then known world. King Cyrus was the most powerful man, man of the then known world. They ruled an empire in that day. And think about this one man that had favor in the sight of these powerful men. In chapter 2, you'll find that Daniel found favor in the sight of Nebuchadnezzar. And he raised him up and he brought him to a place of leadership. So now we see him being raised up and, and favored in the eyes of King Nebuchadnezzar, the most powerful man in the then known world. Then King Darius with the per Medes and Persians, he established as a most powerful man. He found favor in the sight of that king. And then in the, then the next king, King Cyrus, we find. So I want to say to you, God gave this man favor. God gave this man favor not because of his ability or all of his talents, but God gave him his favor because of his faithfulness. The Bible said that God blessed him here because he had believed him. And we know that these lions did not eat him because of the testimony for the Lord. So I want to just talk to you tonight about a few things. Number one, these lessons from a lion's den. Number one, I want you to think about this with me. As we read this passage of scripture, I'm going to tell you most people are not aware of the spiritual effects that are made by Satan to try to keep us from praying. That's what I learned from this passage of Scripture. Most people will not even realize. They'll see when you read this passage of Scripture, we do understand the motive of these men. The Bible very clearly says they did not like him, they were jealous of him, and they wanted to find something against him. But I want you to know something. There is always evil at work. And I want you to know something tonight. Prayer is a powerful tool. Prayer is something that God gives us as an offensive weapon. And I want you to know something. Prayer is not a, a weak weapon. It is a strong weapon. And so we see that Satan goes through great attempts to try to stop this man from praying. We also understand, we know the motive. I'm not changing the narrative of the Bible. We know these men, they did not like him. They were jealous of him. But here's what's not mentioned. We know the power of prayer. We know that Daniel was going and praying. They, that wasn't just a showcase religion. He was literally calling and pouring his heart out before God. And I believe that there was things happening because of his prayer. And if I believe something was happening because of his prayer, Satan certainly knew that something was happening because of his prayer. So we understand most people, and even us included, many times we're not aware of the spiritual effects or the spiritual warfare that is going on around us to try to stop us from praying. Now think about it. Here's some of the things that I just looked at as I was studying. Number one, the plot. Think about this plot. This plot took a lot of time. This plot took some mental activity. They had to come up. They had to meet together. They were sitting there thinking, what can we find against this guy? What can we do? I believe they met several times. The Bible said they conspired to try to find something. In. Why? So they could just simply stop him from praying. 
Think about the plot. The plot, it was, uh, it was acted upon. So not only do we see the plot, look at the plan. Now think about the plan a minute. Great resources was used. Just to stop this one man from playing. You know what they did? They went in. They said, hey, king, we've come up with something. Uh, we, we, we want you. And think about it. Just for 30 days. That, here's what's amazing. They knew it wouldn't take 30 days. They knew Daniel that night. He, they wouldn't have to do it long. They knew because they had watched Daniel's life. And so there was a plot. There was a plan. They built a statue. Hey, listen, they, they can't. Here's another thing about that plan. They appealed to the pride of the king. This took some mental activity. This was a plot. It was a plan. They enacted their plan. And then think about their motive. <laughs> their motives, they simply did not like him. They didn't, want him they, didn't want, they didn't want to be answering to him. Said he was the first of the three. All of these men, he was favored. Daniel was favored above all of these. But I want you to know something. Satanically knowing this. He, he wanted more than just these men not to like him or to be jealous of him. I'll guarantee you, he wanted to stop the power of prayer. Think about it. We're not aware of the spiritual effects made by Satan and the spiritual warfare that goes on to stop us from praying. Give me, let me give you something else. How many of y'all ever thought about your mental activity before you pray? Have you ever noticed you get to praying at night and you're so tired? It's awful funny. You can't even get through one. You go to sleep. Somebody say man. How many times you get alone, you try to pray, and everything under the sun alarms you? And your alarm goes off, your texts go off, your phone rings, something comes up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you right now, there is spiritual effects, there is spiritual warfare. We understand to keep us from praying. There was a plot, there was a plan, there was motive. But then think of this, the resources used. <laughs> there was resources here that was used. I mean, they went to great they, they, they went to great lengths to stop this man from praying. Now look, it was all under the guise of, I'll tell you what, we want to get him. We don't like him. We don't want to look. But listen to me right now. That wasn't all that this was about. I can promise you right now, Satan was working behind the scenes. I can promise you this. Satan hates when God's people praise. And I'm going to tell you all right now, why is it so easy? We can talk about everything, but we don't pray about everything. What does the Bible say about prayer? Prayer of a righteous man, what? Availeth much. You know what that means? It works. It works. So I want to talk to you just a little bit about this when we think about this. Think about the, the, the resources. They, they, just to stop a man from praying three times a day. They used time. They used up energy. They used up mental ability, mental activity. I mean, they put their minds to this thing. How can we stop this guy? They used a statue. They built, and it took money. It took work. It took effort. All to stop a man from praying three times a day. So most people, I'm going to guarantee you, we're not aware of the spiritual warfare that goes on to try to stop us from praying. Number two. Something else I picked up. Just reading this text. Something else about the lessons that I've learned from this lines dance is it shows us how important prayer should be in our lives. It shows how important prayer ought to be in our lives. You say, well, why? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Reading this passage of Scripture and just taking this text alone... For instance, you know what proves that prayer is more important than what we think it is? Just merely by the opposition of it. Can I ask y'all a question? Why in the world do you think it's such a big deal for our children to pray in public school? Now you tell me that. What's such a big deal about a child praying at school? Oh, that's really offensive to somebody? That's really going to hurt somebody's feelings when a young man or a girl has to bow her head and most of the time not even pray out loud? But that's offensive. Now listen to me. It's more than just being offensive. It's an all-out attack on stopping the opposition of people praying in public proves that it's important. Now you think about something when you look at warfare, 
Do you know what the enemy do? Enemy does. Enemy do. You know what the enemy does? By the way, I'm not going to get political, too political tonight, but I want y'all to ask y'all a question. Do you have any idea if those balloons are from China, why they're flying over across our land? I'm going to tell you why. They're not looking for our strengths. They're looking for our weaknesses. They're looking for our weaknesses. And by the way, if China's smart enough to look for our weaknesses, I can promise you Satan's smarter. And I want you to know something tonight. The reason that I know prayer is important because of everybody that opposes it. That's a strength. If prayer is not that important, if it's not that big of a deal then why in the world did Daniel get such opposition? Why do we get such opposition? It's amazing. We can talk about the weather. We can talk about football. We can talk about baseball at work. We can talk about it. But oh my goodness, you bow your head to go to your head and pray, pray. Bow your head to pray. Oh my goodness, somebody's offended. Oh my goodness, my child. Oh, we cannot allow that coach to pray at the football game anymore. Why defend somebody? No, it's bigger than that. You know what? It's an all-out attempt and just stop them from praying. You know why? Because I'm going to tell you right now, Satan knows there's power in prayer. So we understand that how prayer is so important in our lives, how vital it should be because of the opposition of it right here in the text. These men wanted to stop him from praying. But also I, I realized something else from this text why I believe that this lesson from a lion's den helps me to show me why important prayer is in our life is just simply because of the consistency of Daniel to continue to do it. Now, I, I, I emphasize that when I read it. I emphasize when Daniel read the decree. Did y'all know? So he wasn't ignorant. Didn't say, oh, well, I'm going to act like I didn't see that. I'm going to go on up there and pray. And then I'm going to claim, then I'm going to plead the fifth like I didn't know. No, the Bible very clearly said he read the decree and went straight to his bedroom, opened the windows like they always were open, and began to pray. So the very fact that the consistency of him continuing to pray, even though the, knowing the consequences, tells me that Daniel must have had some answered prayer. Proves to me that prayer is important in all of our lives, not only because of the opposition from the enemy wanting to stop the prayer, but also the consistency of a man like Daniel that would even hazard his life to still do it. Tells me it's pretty important. How about y'all? I mean, last time I checked, if you love something and you want something, you're going to stand for it. You'll even die for it. By the way, I'll die for my family if someone comes to me and says, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm coming to your house at 6 o'clock tonight. I'm going to take your son and your daughter and your grandchildren, your family and your wife, and I'm going to shoot all of you. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to just sit by and say, oh, I'm going to leave at 6 o'clock. Why? I'm going to protect what I love. It's the same with prayer. He said, you know what? If it even costs my life, it's important enough to me, I'll die for it if I have to. So the very fact that he's willing to do that tells me that prayer is vital. When you're ready to give your life for something, it's important. So I believe most people are not aware of the spiritual warfare that goes on to stop us to pray. Another lesson is I believe it shows how important prayer is in our lives because of the opposition that Daniel met. Also, not only that, the consistency that Daniel prayed. But number three, and I'll go on to the next one, but here's another one why I know prayer is important. Because I Praise God shows that how important it is because God honored him for doing it. God honored and protected him from doing it. So it shows me that how important prayer is in our lives and should be. If they was in his life, they ought to be important. Prayer ought to be important in my life. How about yours? Number three. Write this one down. I had to write a lot of stuff here to get this in. We live in a culture. I'm going to write it like this. Cultural trends. Here's another one. Popular opinions. Because everybody's got one. Are y'all with me? Everybody's got an opinion. 
But there are popular opinions today. There's cultural trends. Hey, there's political legislation. (laughs) But all three of those things, listen to me, here's my point. This passage proves that it should never supersede our spiritual obligations. You say, Pastor, why do you believe in church separation of church and state? Right here. Why do you believe that the government should keep their cotton picking nose out of your personal spiritual preference? Right here. Look. We're going to give an account to God, not to man. Now look, we ought to obey the law when the law is right, but when it contradicts our personal beliefs and our personal convictions in the Word of God, let every man be a liar and God be true. Now look, we say amen to that and we shout to the raptors, but I'm going to tell you something right now. We've seen us fold a little bit. But I'm going to promise you this, your pastor ain't folding no more. I'm not folding anymore. I'll be thoughtful and I'll be, I'll be as thoughtful as I can possibly be, but I'm going to tell you all something right now. These doors will never be closed. They will remain open and people can determine whether they come or not, but I'm going to promise you right now, I ain't shutting these doors no more. You say, why? I'm going to be honest. I have a personal conviction that God has ordained the church. I believe I have a personal conviction that God says he will will keep his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And we now know we're living in a day where there is legislation tried to stop us during the pandemic. And I thank God there was some people here in even Chattanooga that raised up against our own mayor and he dropped it, which he should have. You say, why? This is a religious freedom. I have a religious right. I have a personal freedom in my Christian faith. I have certain obligations as a Christian. Let's say that they ban today. You can't pray anymore. What are we going to do? Well, if we were Daniel, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pray anyhow. See, this is why cultural trends, this is just one. This is just one. This is one model. This is one model that God puts a stamp of approval on a man that said, you know what? Doesn't matter what opinion is. Doesn't matter what the edict says. Doesn't matter what the legislation says. He said, I have some personal, individual soul liberty that I'm going to give an account to God for. See, we've lost that, the individual soul liberty of a man. It's very important. The individual soul liberty of a person. That means that I'm going to have to give an account to God. That's why we believe in personal religious freedom. I know this is unpopular today. But, you know, look. I call him my friend. I have a friend right up the road. I I don't know if he likes me. The way he talks to me doesn't sound like he does, but I'm going to be honest with you, it amazed me. He wanted to argue, he wanted to fight, he wanted to go up here and have a public debate. But here's what amazed me. I looked at him and I said, sir, I said, there are a lot of things that you and I can unite in. I said, first of all, we could unite in religious freedom. I said, look, I don't agree with what you teach, but I'll tell you what I do. I will die for you to have the right to teach it. You know why? That's religious freedom. God does not dictate the soul and the conscience of a man. He gives us free will. We can believe whatever we want. If someone coerces me or coerces me to believe something, it's not faith at all. But the very fact that he has a right to teach that, even though I disagree with him, religious freedom, he has just as much right to teach what he teaches as I do here. And I will defend his liberty to do so. Because if I don't protect his liberty, then why couldn't someone not protect mine? Why? Individual soul liberty. I'm not, going to even, I'm not going to give an account to my friend. I'm going to give an account before God and what I do with truth. See, Daniel was not even concerned about the king. And he was the most powerful man. He had done been threatened. If you 
give obeisance or pray or to give honor to anyone other than the king. He knew what the consequences was. It was the lion's den. You know what he said? I don't care. I'm going to pray to God anyhow. Why? That's a personal, personal conviction. That is a personal religious freedom that no one can take from us. And if they try, I would have to say, Sir, respectfully, I'm not going to obey. Why? Individual soul liberty. We find right here that Daniel, whether it was cultural trend, popular opinion, or even legislative edict, the king signed it. It was law. It was law. It was law. So most of us, oh my goodness, it's law. We can't do that. Not Daniel. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. Prayer is more important than that. By the way, I'm going to say this. Prayer ain't never hurt nobody. You tell me how a young man or a young woman in a public school kneeling down to pray is going to hurt anybody. Ain't going to hurt a soul. But boy, they've made that thing such a big deal. Oh my goodness, you're treading upon people's consciences. Well, then pray in silence. That ain't the problem, church. Don't be blinded. There's a plot. That ain't bothering nobody. You know what the real problem there? Satan don't want people praying. How many of y'all believe you were saved because somebody prayed for you? Would you raise your hand? Raise it up real high. That right there is why there's such an opposition to prayer. Oh, don't get, don't get enamored by the plot. Don't get enamored by, oh, my goodness, they got a real reason there that people ought not pray. No, listen to me. The only reason they don't want you praying is because the devil knows it works. Oh, it's offending somebody. Oh, well, they're going to get offended by something else. I ain't never in my life seen more offenses in my life, man. Back in the 80s, you just, you just sucked it up and moved on. So I'm like, Dad, can I get a witness? I mean, in West Virginia, man, I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. We had them squirrel tails hanging off them antennas. Somebody say, man, y'all a bunch of city slickers around here. Y'all don't know what that looks like. But, man, in West Virginia, man, on that first day after squirrel season, that was your rite of passage, man. You had them gray tails and them fox squirrel tails just zipping in the wind when you drove down the road. And you could kill six of them. At an old country boy, West Virginia hillbilly, man, you stuck them on your antenna. But oh my goodness, if you do it today, here's what's going on. Oh my goodness, them animal activists. Oh, them poor little squirrels. And back in the 80s, we'd have them gun rocks in the back of our trucks. Somebody say amen. In the cabs. And you could, op you could carry that 30-30 lever action without it being in a case. And nobody called the law on you. Somebody said, but oh my goodness, that redneck's got a 30. I don't even know. They got an assault rifle. They got one of them assault rifle ARs in the back of his truck. And it ain't in a case. It's got a 20 clip, 20 bullet clip in it. Call the police. What? Everybody's offended today. I'm going to tell you all right now. Today, it's not so much all of that. People get offended over prayer. I don't know about y'all. I was carnal as a stick in teen. Look here. I, Chris Saunders, I was carnal as you could be in high school. There wasn't one person in that school that probably knew I was a Christian. I'm sad to say that, but I'm going to tell y'all something right now. I never minded one person praying for me. I mean, I was, I was carnal as a, look, I was carnal as they come. I didn't pray, but I'm going to tell you all something right now. It never bothered me if I knew somebody else was praying for me. Why in the world would somebody get upset today if you just prayed for them? I'm going to tell you why. It's deeper than that. There's power in prayer, church. Our personal lives, our spiritual convictions. The life, the life of Daniel is a personal model for us. Now, we must be wise. There's no doubt about it. And we, the Bible says we got to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. But I'm going to tell you all right now, we better be bold and courageous. That's what Daniel was. So cultural trends, popular opinions... Political legislation, look, should never supersede, should never trump, pun on words, right? Should never trump 
cover, supersede, bigger, make it bigger, or overcome our spiritual responsibilities. And by the way, he was the king. He was the most powerful man of the then known world. Yet because Daniel understood his privilege in prayer, he understood the power of prayer, and he understood his individual soul liberty towards God Almighty, he defied the king's commandment. Now, if you hear me and say, oh, pastor's telling us to go out here and break all the laws, I is not. But I am telling you, when it comes to spiritual, personal obligations, God is always right, and nothing else should supersede that. We see that in the life of Daniel. But number, number four, as I close, I'm going to tell you something else. As I thought about this, man, I about had a shout and fit. God honored, this is another lesson that I learned. God honored Daniel's faithfulness and obedience in prayer. He honored him. He honored him. You know how he honored him? Well, it's very clear. He shut him in that lion's den, and man, the king was up all night, fretting all night, worrying all night. He loved Daniel. He appreciated Daniel. And here's what's amazing to me. The king even said, man, this God that you've been praying to continually, he's going to deliver you. But he didn't know for sure till that morning. He called down there and said, are you still there? And man, old Daniel reached out and said, oh, king, live forever. Man, I'm telling you what, that king was excited. Now, here's what's amazing to me. Those lions wasn't hungry all night long. It's like they had heartburn. Oh, you say something was wrong with them lions. No, not really, because we find out just a few minutes later, breakfast time came. Now, I'm going to tell you all right now, if I have late night snack urges, I can promise you lions do. But it's awful funny, God honored Daniel in the way he shut those lions' mouth for that whole night, that whole evening. But man, as soon as he put that good meat in there, the Bible says he broke their bone. I mean, I, mean, I hate to say that. I hate to see that family die that way. There was many of them. I mean, it, it, this was sat children and what? I mean, it was the whole family. The lions ate all of them. You say, that's gross, Pastor. Yeah, I know, but I'm going to tell you right now, he honored Daniel. Could have been Daniel. But you know what else popped out to me? This is what popped out to me. Here's the other lesson that I learned. God not only honored Daniel's faithfulness, I'm going to tell you who else he honored. He honored himself. <laughs> and by the way, look at me. That's what it's all about anyhow. You know how I know he honored himself? Would y'all look at this with me? Look at this verse with me. I'm going to tell you right now. Bless my heart when I read this. Bless my heart when I read this. Look at this one right here. Look at verse 25. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. Notice what this king said. I make a decree. That in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God. He is the living God. You do understand this is the most powerful man of the then known world. He made a decree said, this God of Daniel's is the true and living God. I'm going to tell you right now why God honored uh, him and I'm going to tell you why he shut the lion's mouth because he wanted to honor himself by the way all honor and glory should go to God anyhow Amen. doesn't matter if people knew about Daniel and all those provinces didn't matter if they knew Daniel's name but I'm thankful because God honored himself in this through the lesson of this lion's den everybody in that province knew who the true and living God was and all because of a man that prayed the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It didn't say how it was going to work, but I'm going to tell you right now, it got God's name to the whole world, to every province. The decree of the king said, his God is the living God, all because of a man that wasn't willing to back down and stop praying. Lessons from a lion's den. Y'all get them tonight? Four of them. Did you get them down? Most people are not aware of the spiritual conflict that's going on and the spiritual effect or effort that Satan's trying to stop people from praying. 
Number two, it shows how important prayer is by the opposition, by the consistency, and also how God honored it. We also realize that cultural trends, popular opinions, political legislation should never supersede our spiritual, personal convictions. And then our God honored Daniel's faithfulness and his obedience for sure, but more importantly, he honored himself because his name got all around the world. By the way, isn't that the thing of life? Isn't that the mission of the Christian life? That all the earth may know. Amen. How many of you are glad we learned some lessons from a lion's den? Amen. And all this because of veggie tales. Let's stand to our feet. Bob the tomato and Larry the... No, is it Bob the potato? What is it? Bob the tomato and Larry the what? Cucumber? So I said that wrong earlier. I knew y'all didn't even correct me. So it's Bob the tomato and Larry the cucumber. I spoke to Bob the tomato. That's who I spoke to. And his son's driving my Toyota truck around. Amen. So anyway, thank God for veggie tales. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but was that, that was helpful to me. Was that helpful to y'all? The power of prayer. That's amazing. The Bible, how it just opens up. And just even the life of one man, one event, how profitable it can be to us. I've never seen a couple of those things. Number one, I didn't realize how much God honored himself there. Most people look at it and say, oh, God honored Daniel. No, he honored himself. His name got all around the world. And then I realized they couldn't find anything on him but one thing, his faith. God help us. Wouldn't that be a good testimony? There's a lot we can learn from the lessons in the lion's den. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. I pray now that you'll take this little thought, speak to our hearts, and help us. Lord, we thank you for the life, the testimony of Daniel. He was favored everywhere he was. But Lord, that was all because of you. You had a plan for his life. I pray that you will help all of us in these days when there needs to be real boldness. I pray you'll give it to us. Help us to never give up our personal convictions. I pray you'll strengthen us now. In Jesus' name, amen. And all God's people say it.